Greetings, beloved. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, today is the 22nd of October. Uh, let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you. We give you the praise and the glory. Give us the bread of life today. Feed us. Feed our souls. Encourage us. Bless us with strength and might in the inner man. Thank you, Lord. Touch your people and anoint your people and fill your people to overflow with your joy and with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, it's always a pleasure to be with you, just to break bread with you. Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are life, they are spirit, okay? And Paul speaks to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that, you know, we speak a, a hidden wisdom, a hidden mysteries to those that are wise, yet not the wisdom of this world. You know, nor do we speak to things that are, you know, carnal, you know, because the carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit. So for you that are, really thirsty and hungry for the Lord and who is watching and waiting. Um, you know, we know that we are in very, very, you know, trying times. The level of persecution and affliction that is happening to the body of Christ, I know I can speak for myself on that. And I also know that uh, with the Lord that I share with other people, with other brethren, that they are going through so many persecutions. But this is only a good indicator that you are in the right track, that you are in the straight and narrow and that uh, whenever you face opposition from the enemy, it means that you are in the right track. It means that um, you have attracted uh, you know, uh, the negative or the fight from the enemy because you are in the right. Satan would not bother you if you were walking in his way. So uh, that's an indicator that you, know, you are where God wants you to be. So I want to touch today. Uh, I see a lot of people who are conflicted by a couple of issues, especially as we are waiting for the Lord's return. There's the first group that is confused about the pre-tribulation rapture and the like. But anyway, I'm, I hope I'm going to be able to address that. It's a very long message, but I want to touch very, very, uh, uh, the, the part that the Lord really revealed to me to share with you today, uh, which should give us hope and encouragement as we wait for the Lord. Because the danger is if we are watching days or feasts and the like, we can really get discouraged if a feast comes and it goes and nothing has happened. So it is very important that we understand. I'm going to try by the grace of God just to quickly compress this again. It's, it's a very, very big subject. But I trust by the grace of God as we go, I'll be able to exp expound you know, those little capsules of, of, of revelation. First and foremost, there is what we call the house of Israel. Okay. And then there's what we call the church. And those are two different entities. And I want you to understand this. When you read the Bible, it's, it's very important for you to study it as well, for you to take time to understand because the Bible is written in context. And you find that there are certain books and certain chapters in scriptures that are referring to a specific area or to a specific people. And it's not just only just the generalization. And you have to understand in context, although, of course, uh, it can be applied to our, to our current and practical lives as we live day by day. But we must then understand the context of, of, of why it was written and what it was addressing to. Okay, so first and foremost, um, the, the, the Old Testament, for example, was mainly, mainly speaking to the house of Israel. It was addressing the issues of the house of Israel. When the Lord Jesus comes on the cross, the Bible says that he says that I have come not to do away with all the law, but rather to fulfill it. He was the fulfillment of of the old, of the shadow. Uh, he was, uh, the, the Old Testament was the shadow of that which was to come in Christ Jesus. But then when Christ Jesus died and rose again, what he then did is that he opened another dimension which was strange to the Jews, to the Israels, which is that of the gospel, the preaching of the gospel, which was then going to be carried to all the world because as far as the, the Jewish people were concerned, only you know, um, um, the Torah and the Old Testament, as we know it now, was only uh, confined to the Jewish house, okay? So it was um, uh, unacceptable for it to be given to the, to, to the Gentiles, as it were, um, to anyone who was not a believer of the house of Israel. So Jesus comes and brings a mystery and, and opens a mystery that allowed the gospel to be preached everywhere. You find that in the book of Acts, Peter was hungry and he went up and, and he had a nap and had a revelation. And in this vision, rather, he saw uh, you know, many animals that were on a cloth. 
and many unclean animals. And in this vision, he was told to wake up and to, and to eat. And obviously, he refused it because in his Jewish culture, that was unacceptable of the things that were on this vision that he had. Uh, but the Lord was trying to show him that that which the Lord has made clean, you could not call it impure. Then we see the, the Apostle Paul who comes in the scene. Now the Apostle Paul is specifically called and sent to the Gentiles. And we see in the book of Galatians, particularly chapter 2, uh, over his conversion and how he eventually goes to see the Apostle Peter. And they also realize and perceive that Paul the Apostle was called not necessarily to the house of Israel or to the, you know, to the, as they call the circumcision, but he was called to go to all over the world as to the Gentiles and to bring the gospel. But his gospel now was not to take them into the Jewish culture, no. Okay, and this is where I want you to, to, to hear me very well. Read Galatians, the book of Galatians study, but chapter 2 mainly. Paul call, was called now to bring a new revelation of what the gospel was, that it was the gospel of grace. You know, that man is saved by faith, not by the works of the law that were being practiced by the Israelites, by the, by the Jewish people. But that men, that, that, that people could only come into the faith, I mean, into the kingdom through faith and not necessarily following the cultures that the Jewish people used to follow. And so there became a war or a tag or a debate that went on in the early church of which it was later resolved when the apostles met together. And then they perceived that Paul truly was a man of God who was called to go and bring this new message, which was a mystery to the Jewish people. So now with that, this is where we need to begin to understand the foundation of the church, that the church is not the house of Israel, but that the house of Israel can become the church. How do we become the church? By receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So whether they were a Jew, whether they were circumcised, they could still also now accept this revelation and this new preaching of the gospel and be saved and become baptized into the new baptism which was, of, which was through Jesus Christ. I hope that makes sense. So with that in mind, we need to understand that the way that God is treating with the church is not necessarily in the same way that he's now treating with the house of Israel. Remember that the house of Israel, God has a promise for them which he promised Abraham. He says, I will redeem you. You're my first wife, actually. And at some point, I'm going to call you to myself. But then Paul reveals in the book of Romans that they are blinded for a season. The house of Israel is blinded for a season so that the gospel can be taken to the Gentiles. And so, and then he goes on to reveal that, but there will come a time that the house of Israel will be saved. Okay, so in other words, God has for a moment temporarily blinded the house of the of, of, of the house of Israel so that the gospel could go to the Gentiles so that the preaching of the gospel may reach to all men including also like I said those of the uh, house of Israel as long as they receive Jesus as the Messiah they believe that currently they believe that the Messiah hasn't come as far as the, you know their concern so if, if 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 they do then come to the knowledge of this revelation that no actually the messiah the one that came 2000 years ago is the messiah then they also do get saved okay fine let me move on on that so what does this mean that means that we come to the revelations that paul begins to talk about the rapture paul is the one who gives us this mystery first corinthians chapter uh, 15 from verse 50 51 52 going he says i show you a mystery this was a mystery and Paul begins to talk about the rapture because the Lord had revealed them the rapture or the apazo. Okay, rapture, you don't find it in the Bible, but apazo is the same meaning as rapture. So the apazo of the church, the catching away of the church would take place. And what was the main reason of the catching away of the church? For many reasons, but one of them was also to provoke the house of Israel so that when the church is removed out of this realm, okay, then the eyes of the house of Israel would open up so they would be provoked to jealousy. But in then now will begin the tribulation, the great tribulation, called in the book of Jeremiah, the time of Jacob's trouble. So the time of Jacob's trouble now will begin after the rapture or the church is taken out of the way. Then the eyes of the house of Israel will open up. Okay, so when this happens, we now, this is why you find that 
you know, people who are saying we're going to go through the tribulation, we're going to go through the tribulation. The question I'll ask is, are you an unbeliever? Are you a house of Israel? Because we see that clearly the purpose of one of the great tribulation is specifically targeted to the house of Israel. That is the whole point. That's the whole purpose. God is now turning his face back to Israel. The church is taken out of the way. First Thessalonians talks a lot about that. And I don't have time to get into it. Watch some of my videos and watch some of other topics that talks about the pre-tribulation uh, you know, rapture. Uh, so God now turns his attention to the house of Israel. Okay, and the church is out of the way now. And so the great tribulation begins and the mark of the beast and so on and so on. Matthew chapter 24 confuses a lot of people because Matthew has got two messages for two audiences. There are two things that are happening there. Jesus Christ is speaking to the church and also to the house of Israel mainly. Remember, these were Jews who were asking these questions. When shall be the sign of your coming be? You know, and then Jesus, from there, Jesus compresses everything that would happen from that time until to the end of the age. It actually talks about to the end of the world. To the end of the world means after the millennia. He doesn't even talk about, you know, a rapture or second coming of Christ. It, Jesus just puts everything all at once to say, these are the things that are going to take place between now and the end of the world. Okay, so everything in between will take place. And you'd find that some of the things that Jesus said on Matthew 24 occurred already after he had just died, 70 years after he had died, when Jerusalem was overrun. Okay, by the Romans. So some of the things had happened that he prophesied. So it was a process. It has been a process even from then until now. And some of those things are yet to be fulfilled. But in any case, did he ever speak in, in its chronological order properly? He just said this would happen and then that would happen and then watch this would happen. But it's only the Apostle Paul that makes it clearer, particularly in the book of Thessalonians, of what is called the gathering of the saints together. And unto his second coming. Paul now puts the two comparisons to say there's the gathering of the saints, the catching away of the saints, and then there's the coming again of the saints and the Lord from glory coming back to rule, which is the second Christ, which is the second uh, coming of Christ. So those two events, the rapture and the second coming, are two different events, or the apazo. The apazo is the catching away or the rapture. The second coming of Christ is when he is coming now back with the saints to rule into this realm for a thousand years. Okay, so I want you to understand your theology so that you don't get mixed up. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I'm speaking now to the church. I just wanted to give you a bit of a foundation, but do further Bible study. The reason why I say this is because for the church of Jesus Christ that is watching for the Messiah, I want you to know that we are in a season where the fact that rapture hasn't happened yet does not mean that it's not going to happen. Okay, it does not mean that we can put it far off. All right? We don't have to wait for a feast day or a day or a season according to the Jewish culture. I'm going to read a scripture here, which I want you to understand. Matthew chapter 25, verse 42. Watch therefore. Okay, let me go uh, the verse before. Verse 40, then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. This is, you can put this mainly as the hapads right there. And it says, two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Verse 42, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord come, doth come. Verse 43, but know this. That if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Verse 14, therefore, be ye also ready. Listen to this. Be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. That's very, very clear. This is talking about the Apazo here. At an hour that you think not, an hour that you, that you, you didn't even perceive that this could happen on this particular day. He is going to come. He's not confined to a season as the children of Israel are. Because he's speaking to the church now. The church is walks by faith. Listen to that. The church lives by faith on a daily basis. We don't live to wait for the rapture alone. But every day as we live, we live by faith, occupying and redeeming the times. Getting on about his work. Because it's, an, it's a walk of faith. That's why we are the children of Abraham by faith. 
we walk by faith not by sight not by feast days not by um, you know any sort of you know things and hierarchies and and and, and stuff that people talk about and say it, it has to happen on this particular day because it's a feast of so and so yes those feasts are important but they have a more revelation and and have been used by God to communicate certain something to the house of Israel and yes, they can also be connected to the church to some extent if God so wishes to. That's why sometimes there's been a debate between the Gregorian calendar and the Jewish calendar, how things seem to be mixing up. God is God cannot be put in a box. You can't limit him. That's the point, okay? So we don't have to necessarily look for the next feast day for the rapture to happen. Because it's clear here that he's saying, at an hour that you think not. That can be right now as I'm doing this video. That can be tomorrow, that can be next week or next year, whatever. But know this, that the fact that it hasn't happened does not mean that it's not going to happen anytime soon. All right, so this is a word of encouragement that you don't have to feel hopeless. You say, oh, I'm well, going to have to wait for the next year for the, for the Feast of Trumpets or for the Feast of Atonement or whatever it is that you may think is the right day for the rapture. It's very clear here, at an hour that you think not, it is going to happen because you are expected to live by faith on a daily basis. I feel in my spirit that I might want to do a continuation of this video. So maybe, you know, bear with me. I might do part two as the spirit of God will lead me. I love you folks and I bless you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen.